Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Mark Rayberger on the line, and he's the Enterprise SaaS Executive. Mark, welcome to the show. Good morning, Adam. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. So I'm excited to get more into what you're doing as a SaaS executive. I mean, hot topic, hot space, a lot of companies being funded. Can't wait to get into that. But before we do that, um, let's get a little bit more into your background. So how did you get started in business and in your career? Yeah, I I think that um, it goes back to when I was in college. Um, When I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, um, I really fell in love with uh, GE, General Electric. Um, back when it wasn't a dirty word. Um, I loved what Welsh had built as the organization, the ability to be an entrepreneur within an organization like GE. And so I really loved and thrived the, in that environment, the ability to push boundaries and, and, and try new things. And it really helped me get a good basis for business. Um, spent you know, almost 15 years there with GE. In, in multiple roles, um, ended up at, in 2010 separating during the financial recession. And at that point in time, I, I really dove into the tech world, um, the data world, the ability to unlock um, the answers to things like how much is a building worth or where are my challenges lying within a process um, in the tech space. So took that train that I had at GE Capital and GE and then started to apply it to many different tech parts of the, of the world, uh, ultimately ending up in falling in love with SaaS sales and leading SaaS organizations, specifically around SaaS sales into enterprise, which is vastly different than traditional SaaS, which is typically you know, smaller ticket um, self-service transactions. Man, I love your story, and I love the way you pivoted and really, uh, whether you knew it at the time, but now, of course, hindsight being 2020, rode that trend and are in the center of what's going on today. So that's amazing. Uh, and I know there's some, and, and I know there's some younger entrepreneurs uh, or also, um, you know, people just starting their career listening right now. And, uh, and to me, I think sales, specifically SaaS sales, is one of the most interesting careers a, a young person just coming out of college can think about pursuing just to get that full, um, really well-rounded education now. So when I was coming out of school, it was financial services. If you went that route, it means you could talk to anybody. Um, you could, you, you'd get a really good skill set. Um, what kind of advice would you give to that new, just kind of new grad or kind of green um, in getting started in SaaS sales or maybe even just thinking about it as a potential career? Yeah, I, I think even taking a step backwards there, um, sales is is probably one of the most uh, empowering careers a, a person can have, especially somebody coming out of college. Um, you know, you think about when, when you went to school, you can get a degree in finance, you can get a degree in accounting. You can get a degree in English literature, but you can't get a degree in sales. And it's really unfortunate because really what sales is all about, the way I look at sales, is you're helping a customer solve a problem. You're not selling a product, but you're helping the customer figure out how to do something different or better, and hopefully the product that you're representing is that solution. So I like to encourage college kids, to really think about that career in sales, not as a salesperson, but as that consultant that's solving a problem. And if you think about just that basis, it is a timeless skill set that can be applied across the board. In today's world, it's SaaS, right? That's where we're applying uh, sales skills today. And to do that, I think that our entrepreneurs of today, the founders of today, need to really think about how do I find a sales professional and what kind of culture do I want to build within that world? Do I want the typical type A salesperson um, who sells with pressure 
or do I want that person who is going to take the time to understand my, my customer's needs and come at it from a consultative approach? Um, the way I think about it is, is I want to build teams with people who can do anything, but they choose to be in, in sales because they're helping people. So that's, that's how I try to think about this. And, and as I think about helping founders um, in organizations we I help uh, and do on a very regular basis, it's find people who have experience and aren't the ones that are saying, I always crush my quota. The ones that can admit that they haven't had 100% sales success because that's just not possible. Oh man, that's great, and I love I love that point you make. You can't get a degree in sales. Well, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's uh, let's switch it up a bit, Mark. I want to get further into what you're doing as enterprise as an enterprise SaaS executive. So first, um, you 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 touched on it a little bit. Let's go a little bit further into um, what mm-hmm. the role of of an enterprise SaaS executive is versus someone that does kind of the smaller sale. Let's start there. Right. Right. So, so if we think about the, um, the, the vision of SaaS, you know, self-service customers and able to, to buy your product and add services when they want to. The challenge is when you get into larger organizations, larger number of seats, not larger number of licenses, you have to apply other sales skills, field sales skills, enterprise account sales skills to that process. Um, and so right now what we're, what we're seeing in this world is sort of a convergence of old school relationship selling and new school technology selling using HubSpot or Pardot or Marketo to drive inbound leads. But when, you grow, when you're getting into high five-figure annual contracts, you know, six-figure annual contracts, it's still about the relationship. It's still about making your customer look like a hero for buying your product. And that is hard to do without being face-to-face with the customer. It's hard to do without being able to understand the decision-makers and the influencers within a decision. Um, so it's really a blending, in my mind, enterprise sales, of old-school sales technolo- uh, techniques with new-school sales technology, like conversational intelligence, like Zoom meetings. Um, in, in a recent role that I was in, we stood up our EMEA team, our European team, um, very, very rapidly. The reason we were able to do that was because of technologies like Zoom um, and the ability to have those face-to-face conversations quickly and easily. But it didn't supplant or replace the need to make the trip to Europe to shake their hand, to look mm-hmm. them in the eye and say that we're going to be a partner. So it, it's, does that make sense, Adam? Does that help oh, that makes, a little makes, bit of where we're at? Perfect sense, of course. Um, and, and I get it. Uh, so it is, it, even though um, I like that you make the point that sometimes you do have to have a meeting tomorrow, or, or excuse me, Friday morning, and you just made me think about it. I'm like, yeah, I, you know what? We've had all these meetings um, over Zoom and all these other things, and it's for this deal. And I'm like, oh, uh, but, you know, we still will shake hands before it's all said and done. And I think that you uh, you hit the nail on the head with that one, Mark. <laughs> um, well, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Let's, uh, so what do you see, and again, not asking you to have this crystal ball, but um, you have a unique vantage point for, for being um, at the, where you've been, what type of companies you've helped um, in the past, and just kind of being on the forefront of that trend. Um, what do you see as kind of next in the SaaS market? That's a great question, Adam. Um, I think that we're at a point, an inflection point with SaaS, of, of what we can enable with technology, and maybe we might be overloading our, our reps with too many tools um, mm. to try to get there. So they're getting a little bit of, of technology um, exhaustion. Um, you know, in one organization uh, that I that I helped, um, they had 18 different systems for uh, an account executive to use, um, from their CRM to their video service through a Zoom, etc. Um, all the way through that process. And it became um, more of a crush than, than, a, than a benefit. It wasn't an enabler, it was a disabler. And so I think that we're at an inflection point of really trying to understand how to accelerate and create a process, a sales process that's replicatable, duplicatable, and can accurately forecast that without eliminating 
the human aspect of it. Because if we get down to it, people still like to buy from people, right? Mm -hmm. They buy from people that they trust and that they know that it has their best interests in mind. So while things like um, the bots that on, on, on websites where you can you know, interact with the organization in real time are really nice, they still don't replace that human effort. Um, and we know AI is, going to, is coming a long way, um, but it still is a human business. And sales is that, that link between technology and the organization. And well said, Mark. Um, so if somebody's listening to this and they want to follow up uh, with you, what's the best way for them to reach out, Mark? Yeah, the best way is probably through just LinkedIn directly. Um, you spell my last name, R-E-H-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E uh, it's Mark with a C. Uh, I'm the only one on LinkedIn, so you can find me out there. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm very active uh, with other groups within the Bay Area here. And uh, if you need help, I probably can find the right person to help you out. Fantastic. Well, hey, Mark, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing as an enterprise SaaS executive. Uh, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. I mean, share this with your friends and family. Do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I uh, really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Uh, and, Mark, thanks again for coming on the show.